Hi, welcome to my show called Inspire Blessings with Jean Marie Prince, and I want to thank you so much for joining us today. And today my guest is Ralph Satellino. He has a testimony of how he came to believe in Jesus Christ. And I know we had met at the uh, Care Center event, and you had uh, wanted to share your testimony because you thought you had a you know, really amazing testimony that you wanted people to know about. You know? Yeah, I wanted people to hear the testimony um, so they would believe in Jesus Christ through the testimony. Right, and because there's an important message in your testimony mm -hmm. of that. Um, so now, Ralph, do you currently uh, work, or are you retired? Or? I, c I currently work. Um, I work in Uniondale as an accountant. Okay. Well, looking back at your life, can you say that it was easy, and if not, why? Uh, my heart, my life was not easy. Okay, and why is that? And, I, and part of the reason was um, um, I was born into a family that was very poor. Now, uh, what was your home like, uh, life like when you were growing up, and was God, God a part of it? God was not a part of the home life. Um, I, I guess it was a little, it was rough because of the money situation. Um, my mother and father used to fight a lot. Mm -hmm. um, so it was, it was a difficult home life, but it was a good home life, too. It wasn't always bad, you know. We had swimming pool, we had good times mm -hmm. also. And uh, when would you say that you started to think about God then? Was there a big trial that might have come in your life that affected in, in, you know, what you were thinking and it, what I was it? I, I, really, I, I didn't really think about God too much uh, growing up, except that I, when I was five or six, I had a dream. Okay. Um, and uh, God spoke to me about my life, and he kind of gave me the first half of the life and the second half of the life, what it would be like. And the first half of the life was going to be a very tough life, and the, sec this, the first half was going to be very tough, and the second half was going to be glorious. Okay. And that's what five or six, I just had Five or six years old. So you're having this dream. Right. Are you thinking in any meaning behind it? I mean, did it scare you? What, what, did you wake up and say, hey, Ma, I had this dream? And no, I, I, I didn't think any, anything uh, of it, um, except that God was giving me, like, a preview of what was to come. And I understand why he gave me that dream, because if you're going through, if you're going to have a tough trial in life, mm -hmm. right, if you have hope, Mm -hmm. You never stop trying because okay. you know that at the end of it, mm -hmm. you, you're going to come out of it. All right, so tell us about the dream. Um, the dream was um, I was kneeling before two statues. Um, one was um, Jesus and one was the Virgin Mary. And they, they were talking to me. And they were telling me about like everything that would happen in my life and all the trials I would go through through the first half of my life. and. And then uh, I, when they were done telling me this, I said, you know, God, I really don't want this life. <laughs> I said, take this life, and I, I really don't want it. But then they said to me, the second half of my life, that I would be called into ministry, and it would be glorious. And I, sa I said to God, I said, God, you know, you gave me some details on the first half of my life. Now, can you give me some details on the glorious part of the life? Mm -hmm. And he said, it's just going to be glorious. Mm -hmm. And that, that's... That was my first encounter. Right. Now, why do you think the Virgin Mary was included in the conversation with you and Jesus? I don't know. I have no idea. I don't, I don't question it, but I can tell you that what took place through my first half of my life, everything has come to pass. Okay. So uh, whether, uh, whether there was the Virgin Mary there or whatever, whatever means God chose to relay the message. Right. Mm -hmm. You know. So when did you finally um, start to have a faith then? Um, when I was 17, um, you know, I was on the honor roll, um, seventh grade, eighth grade, part of ninth grade, and I was going to bed one night, mm -hmm. and I, I said to God, I had a little conversation with God, I said, um, you know, God, I'm pretty smart, and I'm tired of being poor, mm -hmm. and I said, I'm going to use my talent, and I was kind of presenting to God like what my plan for my life was going to be. Sure. And see, and see if he okay. had any feedback right. about it. And I said, I'm going to do everything in my power once I'm in business to get ahead. If I have to steal, if I have to rob, if I have to do whatever it takes mm -hmm. to get to the top and climb the corporate ladder. And I kind of went to bed and I said, what do you think about that? Well, that's kind of... <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious. All right, so tell us, tell us how he answered that. <laughs> <laughs> well, when I was sleeping, uh, I had a vision. There was two hands that were opened up, and the Bible was opened up, and there was a scripture highlighted. And the scripture was, what shall a man gain if he gain the whole world, and yet lose his soul? soul. Right. 
And, I, and then I woke up in the morning. I said, so I guess that plan that I had is <laughs> being selfish is, and is, rude. And, yeah. <laughs> right? mm -hmm. The plan that I had is not going to work. So I, I said to God, I said, do you have a better plan? Mm -hmm. Right? And I just left it like that. Right. And then three months later, um, God answered that, 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 that question. And he, he, I had another vision. And he took my heart out of my body. And he showed me my heart. And in my heart, it was like divided in like 10 pieces. And it was like little, little kingdoms in the heart. Mm -hmm. So like you have one for relationships, you have one for different things. But there was a piece that was missing in the heart. And he said, you have to go out and find this missing piece. And I, then I said to God, I have nine pieces. You want me to go out and find one piece? Mm -hmm. Why would I go out and find one piece if I already have nine? And then he said to me, if you go out and find that one piece, you can have all the nine, too. So you'll have ten. So I said, well, ten is greater than nine. I'll go looking for this missing piece. Now, you share this with anybody? Do you think to yourself, am I crazy? You know, I, I don't happen? share this with anybody at this point. Um, but at this point, I, I'm starting to ask my friends on a job, 17 years old, what is the meaning of life? Because mm -hmm. now I'm on a search to find this missing piece. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got some really weird answers. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, get a drink a beer <laughs> yeah, <right? laughs> with your friends at 17. I got some really weird answers. Um, and where I was working, uh, they started hiring born again Christians. Mm -hmm. And my friend that was working there was a priest, was studying to be a priest. And there was a woman working there who was a born again Christian. And we all went on break one day. Right. And we're eating lunch in uh, a fast food, food place. And they're discussing the Lord, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm saying to myself, I really don't want to hear a word about this conversation. I don't want to hear a word. And the Holy Spirit speaks to me. And he says, what you're missing is Jesus. And I said to myself, that makes no sense to me. Mm -hmm. Because my intellect was saying, there's something here I have to figure out with my mind. There's got to be something more to it than just Jesus is, is what I'm missing. Mm -hmm. So I kept looking for the peace. Why were you so dead against in it being Jesus? You know, I really don't know. Um, but I was just, I didn't want to hear anything about religion. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to hear uh, nothing. You know, you mentioned, you know, the Lord's, you know, I, I just, you know, that just but, wasn't But you had the dream at the age of five. Yeah. Jesus is speaking with you. Right. And you have all these things happening. Didn't you think that there was also a spiritual realm then other than just this, you know, life? I didn't. I got to be totally honest with you. I didn't. I didn't know what was happening at this point, except I was starting to have a conversation with God. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess you know, there's that thing they call the scale of unbelief. You know what I'm saying? Where people sometimes just don't want to believe. They just have scales over their eyes, things like that. You know. And I think maybe that's what was part of it. But I was on a I was on a journey to find something. Right. And and you know I didn't know what I was looking for, mm -hmm. but I kept looking for it. Did you? Sorry. So continue with your story, though. So I, I get to uh, about the age of 19, and I'm still looking for this piece. And one day, one day I'm, uh, I'm just talking to God, and I said, you know, I, I, I looked two years in New York for this piece, and I still haven't found this piece. And then God just pulled at my heart, mm -hmm. and he said, and it's like he was like pulling it out of my chest. You have to find, it's urgent, you have to find this missing piece. Right. So what I did is now, being brought up Catholic, you know. Mm -hmm. I lit some candles, and I started to pray. Right. And uh, I can tell you, it didn't do, do much. Okay. <laughs> I still didn't find a missing piece. So I decided to pack all my things in, in my car, my clothes, everything. And I, I said to God, I've been looking for this missing piece for two years, and I still haven't found it. Maybe it's not in New York. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'm going to go to Florida. So I packed everything in my car. And I said, I'm going to finish my last night at work. And then after that, I'm just in the morning, I'm going to shoot down to Florida mm -hmm. and continue my search. Well, I never made it to Florida. Okay. Um, I was on my way to work, and uh, you know, there was a long light that, that, if you got stuck at that light, it was like four or five minutes. Mm -hmm. So I, I tried to make the light. And when I was trying to make the light, all of a sudden, there was a truck that was like right in front of me. Mm. And I, and. When I saw the truck, I knew I was going to hit him. There's no way to avoid him. So I looked up to the, to the night sky, and I, I, I prayed a quick prayer. 
I said, God, if you're up there, now is the time to let me know because mm -hmm. I'm 19 and I'm mm -hmm. dead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just, yeah. There's no way around this. Right. So I hit the truck and I was out cold. Right. Out cold. And then the next thing I know. You should have been dead, is what really we should have been. Yeah. Right, right. I, mm -hmm. And basically, I think I was kind of like leaning one way or the other at that point because right. I'm out of my body now mm -hmm. and I'm looking over my body, you know, my, my, I guess mm -hmm. my spiritual mm -hmm. soul is out of my body and I'm looking at myself on a stretcher. Right. And I remember I just had this, this car accident and I said, okay, I must be dead. Mm -hmm. like I'm out sure. of my body, my body's there. Right. And all of a sudden I'm looking at the, at the end of this stretcher and I see a soul there. And, and the soul looked like if I was to take a clear plastic bag, put it over me, and then take it over, take it off of me, it was like a clear plastic bag mm -hmm. in the shape of a man. It's like a glove. It's almost like a glove. Like a glove of, a, of, a, of, of your, a person. Your soul. Mm -hmm. but, but it was mm -hmm. like a clear, right. transparent mm -hmm. outside. Right. And as I'm looking at the, at the soul, um, I'm seeing dark smoke go by. And mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, as the smoke is going by, right, I'm reading the sins that this soul had committed, mm -hmm. right? And I'm saying, okay, maybe the knock on my head gave me some supernatural mm -hmm. power to mm -hmm. read sin now, you know? Right. And I'm reading the sin, I'm like, wow. And I was like, whoa, <laughs> it was like, mm -hmm. oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Now all of, a sudden, all of a sudden there's a narrator behind me, mm -hmm. right? And he says to me, that's your soul. And I said, how do I know that's my soul? Because everyone who's ever walked the earth has done the same things that I've seen. So it goes, look again. So I look back at the soul and the dark smoke went by and I said, yep, that's I my soul. That. <laughs> that, that's something I did mm -hmm. that I know that belongs to me. Right. It's like the fingerprint of my soul sure. that, that connected it with me. So now I think I'm dead. Okay. And I said, okay, I, and I'm trying to get out of this, mm -hmm. this situation. Mm -hmm. So I, I wanted to build a case with God. And I said, God, you can't really judge me because everyone who's ever been born a man that walked this earth has sinned, mm -hmm. right? So this, you can't judge True. me. True, yeah. Right? So the voice says, look again, right? So I'm looking at my soul. Then I look at another soul. Mm -hmm. And this is the same form, except no sin. There's a man that walked this earth oh, except mine. that did not sin. Right. So that threw my case out. Mm -hmm. I was building a case. Mm -hmm. Now I had no case, mm -hmm. and I had no way. I had no way out of the situation, and I, 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 I thought to myself, "How do I get out of this?" Mm -hmm. And I, there was no answer. Yeah, you couldn't even lie about it either, because you know that you're lying. I was dead right. in the water. Mm -hmm. This right. is my soul. I'm a sinner. Right, right, right. Right. This is soul here. I can be judged now right. that hasn't sinned. And then, as I was just out of my body, the heaven opened up. And a light from heaven came down. And God's word, again, he put it right in front of my face. He who believed in him should not perish, but have eternal life. And I knew this was God's word, because mm -hmm. it had just come right from the mouth mm -hmm. of God. Mm -hmm. There was not doubt. There was not unbelief. This right. is God's word. Right. So I said, I'm going to build another case. If I believe in God's word and God is wrong, then I'm going to tell God he has to pack up the whole universe, because then he's just a liar. Mm -hmm. So if I believe, what's my way out if, it, if I'm wrong? Mm -hmm. I'll tell God, you're a lie, and the whole thing is mm -hmm. just a mess. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I looked at the soul that was without sin, and I said, you know, I, I didn't really, I, I, I want to find out who this was. So I thought back to my Catholic upbringing, and it came to me that the man without sin is the Son of God, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So I pointed to the soul, and I said, according to my religion, the man without sin is the son of God. Mm -hmm. And I was waiting for this soul to say, oh, it's me, Ralph, don't worry about things, everything's gonna be fine, mm -hmm. but nothing. Right. Didn't say a thing. Um, so I knew I had to make a decision to believe God's word or not to believe God's word. Mm -hmm. So I decided to myself that I would do it my way and I would, the way I was gonna do mm -hmm. it was like all the way. Not okay. like, uh, this is what you are, but I was gonna do it my way. And the voice in the background said, this decision to believe the word of God and receive Jesus Christ is the difference between heaven and hell. 
And I said to the voice in back of me, all right, I had enough of this. This is going on a long time now. <laughs> You're telling God. Yeah, because- You're telling God off, by the way. Yeah. Okay. I, but I got to tell okay, you, okay. at 19, right? Yeah. <laughs> I still had my personality at 19. Yeah, but you should have been fearing. But anyway. Uh -huh. I wasn't. Mm -hmm. I, had, I had no fear. Um, I didn't know where I would end up. But at 19, being an Italian, mm -hmm. not that Italian, so like this. <laughs> they just don't use their it, It's like, you know, I had a short fuse. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know, and I was still who I was. And so I said, I'm going to make my decision. If I'm wrong, send me to hell. If I'm right, send me to heaven. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I pointed to the soul without sin, and I said, according to my religion, the man without sin is the son of God. And then I said, and that's who I say you are. And I want you to go tell your father that I believed in you, and I should not perish, but I should have eternal life. So I quoted back the word mm -hmm, of God mm -hmm, to him. Mm -hmm. And I went, there, I made mm -hmm. my decision. Mm -hmm. And the voice in back of me said, look again. So I looked back at the soul, and you know when, when they crucified Jesus, they didn't recognize who they were crucifying because there was a veil over their eyes. Right. And when I looked back, all of a sudden the veil started to rip in half. And all of a sudden I recognized, oh my God, this is the Son of God, and I'm probably dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but you had said that you believed. <laughs> but I believed, right? And I told them, I want you to go up and tell your father that yeah. I believed in you right, right. and I should not perish but right. have eternal life. Right, and that's what he is. He's an intercessor. He's mm -hmm. my intercessor. Thank God. Praise Jesus. Yeah, that you had the right answer. <laughs> now, the whole scene changes and now I'm looking up at heaven and I see these big, long, uh, what do you call it, legs of a chair, mm -hmm. right? And I see Jesus on one side and then I see another person on the other side. Mm -hmm. And now this is a trial going on in heaven for my soul. So what I told him to do, he went and he, mm -hmm, he was doing mm -hmm, it. Mm -hmm. Of course, I know who, who the other person is mm -hmm, now, if, right. after knowing God a little while. He was the accuser of the brethren, he's the devil, who accuses you night and day before God of your sin, and, mm, you know, okay. but the blood, right? Mm -hmm. So the trial ends, and I don't know why they did this, but they brought me up there, right? And I knew God was right above me. So I said, no one's ever going to believe this. I said, I got to see what God looks like. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you got to see what Jesus looked like. <laughs> right? <laughs> so I tried to like lift up, but there was like, I don't know how to explain this, but there was like a barrier. Okay. I couldn't get, a, I couldn't break this barrier. So mm -hmm. I tried a couple of times mm -hmm. and then I was exhausted. Right. Right. And so they wanted to show me something. And they, I saw myself on the earth one day mm -hmm. and I, I have no reason why they showed me this. And I was taking God's name, and I was really cursing, cursing God's mm. name, taking him in a vain. And I'm looking Doesn't down. Doesn't surprise at me, Ralph. <laughs> <laughs> now, now I'm hearing it. What are you hearing? Right? Your testimony, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, wow, you know, I was like, oh my God, no. And I'm up there, I'm looking at myself, and, I, and I'm saying to myself, do you know who's above me? And I have the realization mm -hmm, that God mm -hmm. is real. Right. Right? And I, I started. I started like rebuking myself, saying, don't say that, stop that, don't you know who's above me, you're going to get me in really big <laughs> trouble. Shut up, my big, big mouth. <laughs> She's a bit. <laughs> you're so, stupid fool. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like that, mm. yeah, that's exactly how it was. So if that scene ends, I get, they take me and put me back into my body. And I remember going into my body and my body was cold. Mm -hmm. right? So I figured maybe I really was dead. And then Jesus comes walking through the hospital walls. And the walls were like big brick walls mm -hmm. in, in the hospital. Comes walking right through the walls. He touches me. He instantly heals me. And then he speaks to me. And he says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. And lo, I'm with you to the end of the age. And I popped up from my stretcher. Wow. Wow. Now, there was two nurses that looked at me. Right. And I don't know what part of the hospital I was in, but it's not a part of the hospital I recognize. And I was able to read their faces. 90% mm -hmm. doubt, 80% unbelief, right? right? So they asked me, I pop up from this thing, this car accident, whatever, I was halfway dead or whatever. And they asked me, okay, what day is it? 
right? And I said to myself, why did he ask me what day it is? Right. I just was in this horrible car accident. So I had the band on my right. thing, and I said, okay, it's this day. I think it was in January. Uh, and then he said, who's the president? Well, I got to tell you, I got it wrong. But then I corrected myself. I said, I said, I, I think, I don't even remember what I said. But then I said, it's the peanut man, Jimmy Carter. <laughs> right? Then he took me up to my room. And three nurses started undressing me because I, I was like a little wow. woozy. Um, I went to my bed. And then I woke up a couple of hours later. And I got dressed. Mm -hmm. And I, I was walking out the, the room in the hospital. And the nurses said, you can't leave. We have to run tests on you. And I told them, I said, listen, Jesus just healed me. I'm healed. I'm going home. Mm -hmm. He goes, no, you can't leave. So they ran tests for me, on me for three days straight. They had a newer surgeon. They had everything, mm -hmm. taking blood at the night. I just remember all these tests they were doing. Um, at one point in the hospital, um, I prayed to God. I said, God, I've just been through this whole um, ordeal and I know you can do miracles because you saved me and what I prayed was I, I asked him to change my father's heart mm -hmm. because of the fighting that was happening in, in the home mm -hmm. and I just left it at that I just said God can mm -hmm. you do me mm -hmm. a favor and just mm -hmm. change my father's heart and I said God how do I know what I just experienced was really real mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and he said to me at one point in this room there will be three raps and I said that's that, to, me, to me, that was like impossible right, right? Right. to get three Ralphs in one room. Right, right. I don't think I've met many Ralphs in my whole lifetime. Mm -hmm. So the guy who's, who's next to me gets wheeled out. Who are they wheeling? A Ralph. A Ralph. So I said, well, you got two in here, right? And then who comes in in the morning? The janitor. And I start talking to the janitor. His name is Ralph. So I got three Ralphs in a room. On the third day, the newer, newer side, uh, Neurosurgeon. Neurosurgeon comes in and you know he's taking my reflexes like he normally does except this time it's the third night he comes in he takes a pen right mm -hmm. and he starts sticking it in my toes right do you feel this I said yes I do mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden I had a conversation with God mm -hmm. if he sticks this in my face we're gonna have a problem here <laughs> so he goes up my knees he sticks my legs he sticks my torso then he starts jabbing it in my face. And I go to the guy, get out of here. I had enough for everybody here. Mm. So he walked out of the room. He was shaking his head. And he said, release him. I can't find anything wrong with him. And so they let me go, and I was, I was out of there. You know what? I, God is very patient. To put up with um, your arrogant attitude, your prideful attitude, and not really, you know, I mean, still at, at the brink of death, you're, t you're still you know, was maybe an arrogant and, and rude and things like that, and and to, for him to give you the last chance. It was the last chance. It really was. That's the grace of God. Oh my goodness! You know, to think. Oh no. At the I, age of nineteen, you would have been. I mean, you were. When the accident happened, how how was it? Like like this uh, from the car? What? There was no way I was going to avoid. It was a truck. Okay. There was no way I was going to avoid okay. the truck. Uh, when I prayed that prayer, mm -hmm. a voice said to me turn and go with the truck, right? So I turned, started turning, I was gonna hit him. Mm -hmm. The corner of the, the car, it was a subcompact mm -hmm. car, hit sure. the truck. Mm -hmm. Now I never saw the, the, the car wreck. I would have liked to have right. a picture of it. Sure. Uh, but my family did. Mm -hmm. And they said, you hit that truck so hard that it pushed the engine into the passenger seat. Wow. So it was a, I was, I, and yeah, yeah, really. because I was flying. I mm -hmm. was really flying down 347. Right. Now, when I got home, just to follow up on sure. something, my mother and father never fought again. Hmm. God answered my prayer. Mm hmm See that? And what I've learned is I, we, I just had this conversation with my sister, my mother, my brother, and what God was kind of like telling me is like, when he came to the earth, he had, he had a plan. He, he wanted to build something, but he needed building materials, right? And you're saying how God is so patient, right? Mm -hmm. Yet when we were dead in sin, God still loved us, right? Mm -hmm. And he took us. We were broken. Mm -hmm. We were rotted building materials, right. right? And this is what he had to work with. 
but the new birth starts the regeneration process. Right, right. Well, you know, um, you have an amazing testimony, and I hope that many viewers will be able to hear it because um, you never thought, first of all, that, that you'd be sharing it on TV, which thank you so much for doing that. You know, and because I find one of uh, this interview to be one of my most interesting so ones. It's, it's to, an interesting interview. I'm yeah, sure. <laughs> and I think now you really should start sharing it, okay? You um, know, and really getting getting it more out there. I don't know if it's just if you just you know to your family, but now you. No, really you know should. what? I got to tell you, before I met you, um, the week before I met you, um, that was on my heart. Yeah. To start sharing the testimony. So I went online to Sid Roth, it's mm -hmm. Supernatural, mm -hmm. and you know I was going to fill out all the paperwork, this right. is my testimony, mm -hmm. but then I, I met you at, at that event, and I said, okay, God, if this is the channel you want to do this with, then well, I, I think Well, I think I possibly may have another person that might be interested in your story called Rob Rennie, the Eternal Planner. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> But I want to thank you so much for being on my show and for thank sharing you. your testimony. And I always like to give um, one of my inspirations to you know my guests. And I chose uh, "Let Your Trials Belong to Jesus." Books and inspired blessings, inspirational prints are available at gmarieprints.com. Um, so trials in your life can make you stronger or weaker. If you rely on your own strength, it will bring you down to your knees. It makes you realize that you don't possess the power that is needed. And that is when you pray with tears in your eyes and with an aching heart for Jesus to come and take hold of your life with his power and love. Sometimes unexpected things happen in your life that makes you wonder, why did it happen and for what purpose and how will it affect my future? But only God knows the answer if you, and you need to trust that he loves you. He knows what your heart desires and he wants to fulfill it in his time. So be patient and trust in Jesus that he's planned out your life. One day you will look back and see why these trials hurt so much. They needed to break your heart and spirit in order for you to remember how that event changed your life and how you put your trust in Jesus. That is why you have been blessed today because you allowed him to take hold of your will and for his plan to grow and to work in you. And trust in the Lord with all your, thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he will shall direct thy paths. Proverbs 3, 5, 6. Thank so you I want so to thank much. you so much for being on my show. Thank you. And um, thank you so much for joining us today. And again, if you could like my Inspired Blessings Facebook page to get updated things. And uh, keep Inspired Blessings within arm's reach to help give you comfort when others are lost for words. Thank you, and God bless. To accept and receive. Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Please say this prayer. I know that I am a sinner who needs forgiveness. Jesus, please forgive me for all my sins and purify me. I know that you died and rose again to pay for my sins. I need you to be my Lord and Savior for the rest of my life. Thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. With man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible.